Hello, Sillaholics, and welcome to Sillaholics Anonymous. If this is your first time here and you've never viewed any of my videos, I do hope that you enjoyed the contents of this video and will choose to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I release new content. If you are a subscriber, thank you for the support and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to share another quick tip and this time it will be on text to path. In these quick tip videos, we are aiming to get these done in 10 minutes or less, all right? We're gonna go ahead and jump right over into this, into our uh, sample um, images right here. First things first, I'm gonna go ahead and just fill these with color. Uh, makes it a little bit easier to see. If you are brand new to Silhouette Studio and you don't know how to initiate your text, you're gonna use the A on this side, click on it, start to type out your text, and then you will click off, click back on it, and you will use the A on this side to select your font. Once you have your font selected, we're gonna just pull this off to the side. I like to work off of like my work surface for some reason. I'm gonna make a quick duplicate of this. All right, let's zoom in. To get to your text to path uh, icon, you're gonna take your text still in text mode. So you cannot do this if you have done any modification to your text. So if you have um, ungrouped it, if you've made it a compound path, if you've welded it, anything like that, you won't be able to do this. It has to still be in text format. So we're gonna double click on it. You're gonna get the little green box with the blue on the end. The most important part of text to path is this circle with the cross in the middle. You're going to hover your mouse over that circle, click on it, drag it over to your path, whether it's a box, a circle, an image, um, a, a picture, a clip art, whatever it is. So with this one, it gravitated towards the inside. I want it to pop out to the outside. So rather than move around to where I'm just moving around to the inside of it, I'm gonna push up so that my text can flip to the outside. So I don't wanna go too, too fast because it'll come all the way off. Just slightly push up, there we go, and it will gravitate and, and grab on to the outside. My text is a little bit big for this size square, so I'm gonna click off, click on it, where I'm not in uh, selection, in text edit mode. I wanna be in selection mode. And I'm going to go over here. Yeah. I'm going to go over here and go to my fonts and change the size of this to a smaller size because it's a little bit too big for this. So let's take this down. Uh, let's go back here. And let's take this down to about 50. Okay. And let's double click on it again. And I can probably fit that across the top. Um, but we're gonna rotate it around so that SA quick is on the top and then tips is kind of going down the side. So let's pull this one back to about there, okay? Once you have it where you want it, when it comes to uh, script fonts, you can either ungroup it if you feel like you may need to do adjustments before you weld it. So you will ungroup, make any adjustments and then go back in and weld or if you are fine with it the way that it is, you will just click on just the text. Make sure that the square or the shape is not selected and you're going to weld, All right? Everything that's touching will be welded together. Anything that's loose will be separate. Then you would right click and group. I can then move this over or away from the shape and it is in, you know, it's on that path. It's kind of locked into that shape and your original shape or path will be intact. It doesn't mess with it. So you're gonna see when we do it around this image right here, it's not going to affect the clip art itself. All right, I'm going to do that same thing on this circle. So we're gonna take the quick tips. I'm gonna just bring the whole thing over here. And this time I'm gonna shrink it um, beforehand. And shrink this oh come on shrink it down depending on your circle we're going to make one that's kind of a perfect circle if it's an oval it's a circle that will determine how much it curves 
So we're going to make this one a perfect circle. And this one, I'm going to elongate it some. And let's make a couple duplicates of this. So we're gonna go here. Let's make this one just a little bit bigger so I don't have to adjust the size of my text. All right, so double click on that. And you're gonna just bring it to it and it's gonna curve. If it was a smaller circle, it'll curve around even more. Now you, you would learn how to adjust it to fit the size circle or whatever size shape you are using. All right, we're going to click um, click off. Come on, oh, oh, come on, don't do this to me. All right, we're gonna click, uh, drag it back up here. Oh, come on. All right, don't know what's going on with this. There we go. We're gonna click off. You're gonna click back onto the text, right click and weld. All right, if it is something that is more oval, it won't have as much of a bend. So we're gonna click on it, bring it down, and you can see it's almost straight. It's a slight bend. If I were to bring it over here, it's going to curve a little bit more. If I were to make it a full circle, it would curve even more than that, all right? Um, when it comes to your like text, and let's say you have more than one line of text, you cannot make it curve to where it will stay within like those separate lines. This has two lines on it. I'm gonna pull this up here and make a duplicate. If I double click on this, and bring it to my path, it becomes one line. If you want to have multiple lines of text, but you want to have it where it is curved um, or it's like it's stacked on that shape, you have to do each line individually. Because if you type it in, like I said, it's two lines. Once you put it on the path, it will all just follow one path and it'll just become one line. If you have an image that you want to go around, so it doesn't have to be a shape that you uh, create from the shape tools within Silhouette Studio, you can do pretty much any shape that you want. Once you trace something, it becomes a path or a shape. I don't know what's going on with this one. There we go, I was trying to pull that up. Um, pull that off of the line and we're gonna make this really, really small. Right, and I'm gonna take the line color off because it's so small now, help you see that a little bit better. And let's zoom in. I forgot I want to do this one first, so we're just gonna double click on this and I'm gonna show you just going around this particular image. Probably should make it a little bit smaller. Double click. Okay. Sometimes version four can be very stubborn. There we go. And let's pull this down to the shape. And you can see that it will go around this shape. So no matter where I pull it to, it will go around this shape. If you want it to move away from the edge of it, you will use this little slider here and either push it up or down to move it either inside or outside of your shape. For an image, you want to trace it first. So for this, I'm going to go ahead to my trace window, just gonna put a box around it, take my threshold up until all of my edges are masked in yellow, because all I really care about is the edge, but I am gonna do this as a trace and detach. I could do a separate trace and just put it on there, but in this case, we're gonna go ahead and just make it all one and we're gonna do a trace and detach. So we're gonna take our threshold up. We're gonna do a trace and detach. It will now become a path and we can do our text to path the same way that we did for any of the other ones. It's gonna just take a little minute for this to uh, come out. All right, so now we have that. We don't need any of this. And let's delete that, all right? 
and I'm gonna take this down a little bit smaller because this well let's bring her let's make her bigger versus making the text smaller that way it's easier for you guys to see all right and let's try and get her to stay large there we go double click on your text and let's get rid of that one double click on your text grab the circle bring it to your path and it will contour around it. All right, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna go, I like keyboard shortcuts, Control A. That way I select everything that's in there. It'll be Command A on a Mac. I'm gonna come over to my text tool or my textile panel, and I'm gonna make it much smaller, the font, just so that the letters aren't so spread out. Let's make this, let's take it all the way down to like maybe 15. Make the letters really small so you can really read it going across the edge of this. So you can see it's going around and it's contouring. Again, same thing applies. If you want it to kind of come off of the image and not be right up on it, we're gonna double click on it to bring up that um, text to path icon again. and you're gonna move that slider up to move it away. You'll pull it down to move it inside the path. All right, Celia does not want to cooperate right now, but you saw me do that example um, on the other shape. The same thing will apply. I'm glad I was able to show you though to uh, trace it and detach so that you can add it to the edge of it. Hopefully this quick tip helps. If you have any suggestions for other quick tip videos, do not hesitate to leave them as a comment below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up this video, share this video, uh, leave me a comment, and I will catch you guys in the next quick tip tutorial, quick tip, quick tutorial, or just one of my regular tutorials here on Silaholics Anonymous. If you are on Facebook, look me up. I have a Silaholics Anonymous Silhouette Help Facebook group. That link will be in the description box. And also check out my Facebook page, Silaholics Anonymous. All right, guys, until next time, have a great one.